Hi Scorpio, I didn't forget about you for your November uh, reading, new moon reading. I just, um, part of your reading, the, when I did it, went in slow motion. I don't know if that's indicative of what your situation is right now, that things are kind of moving slowly for you, but I couldn't put out the reading, so uh, I'm going to attempt it <clears throat> one more time. Obviously it'll be different than the first time, but... Um, can still be helpful and maybe maybe it's better who knows okay so the uh, welcome <laughs> to your new moon in Scorpio reading for November 13th 2023 I'm doing this on the new moon uh, so it's pretty authentic you have for the trajectory of this reading number four people teacher four is bringing some foundation or stability to a situation so maybe you're um, learning something or teaching something that are the fundamentals of, of something, a good foundation, a good strong foundation with the number four. That's the trajectory of the reading, and um, you yourself have the death card, which is appropriate because it is uh, associated with Scorpio. Change, transformation, endings, new beginnings, purification as well for me. So let's see where this is bringing you. There can be a lot of changes during this time, a lot of endings and new beginnings. Um, the death card in my other deck just flipped out now, so there's definitely some big changes. Um, and, I mean, this is not a card of, of that you've learned something. This is a teacher, so either you are learning something, you've learned something from um, the what has just sort of taken place in your life, or um, you can teach something that you've learned uh, recently or in the last few years, months, something like that. But there's great transformation where that's concerned, and this is your moon for Phoenix energy, right? We're, um, we're um, rising from the ashes, so to speak. Okay, so I'm going to lay out all the cards first. The first column is for um, where you find yourself at the time of the new moon, what's happening around you, or something new that you're getting started with here. And the second column is you and how you're dealing with the, the, uh, the energy or what's being started here in this new cycle because new moons bring in new cycles. Uh, so it can be how you're dealing with things, um, how you're behaving, you in this energy. And lastly, you have the outcome, or the likely outcome, um, the potential. And it's probably for the two weeks because the full moon closes out this major cycle for you. Okay, let's get started. First column, where you find yourself, what's happening for you at this time of the new moon. Messages are coming in with that Knight of Wands for me. Uh, it can make things a little bit excitable, a little bit erratic. Uh, these are usually messages that come in through um, electronic devices. Um, so phones, text messages, emails, podcasts, uh, videos, uh, Zoom calls, that kind of thing. Um, video conferences, whatever. And it does get the energy pretty excitable. You may be a little bit fiery around this time as well. Um, and passions can be running high. Uh, but you're kind of, uh, I would say, finished with games or this is difficult mental situations. And depending on your perspective, right, is this dawn or dusk? It's the end of a very difficult day or the beginning of something better. We are looking for mental peace of mind. And the 10 is the card or the frequency of um, something ending as you are beginning something new simultaneously. So, you know, it's not just an end and then it's over. There's something else going on behind the scenes as well that you're getting started with. And there can be a lot of, um, these two go quite well together. This is my detective card. It is uh, the card of Taurus for me. 
Um, and he works quite hard to uncover information or to understand things at a deeper level and can work very long and very hard to get that information. Uh, if you're dealing with a Taurus type person, they can be square in features. This is a younger uh, person, obviously, um, so they can be youthful or they can be young in age. Um, but they are probably rather intelligent people. And um, like I said, they really want information. They seek information so that they can clear the clouds in their mind, all the questions that they have um, in regards to maybe information that's coming in or this new um, beginning that's happening here with that Ten of Swords. And I say that because here's your simultaneous new beginning, the Ace of Swords. So you are ending a very difficult mental cycle <laughs> and beginning a new one. But here's the thing with the Ace of Swords. It is triumph and security. So even when you go through the entire suit or the, uh, all of the um, energy of the Ace of, of the Sword uh, suit, rather, you are assured triumph. You are assured that you will see things clearly you'll understand things better. Uh, you, that's, that's what the whole idea of the sword suit is, is an understanding. It's, uh, the king of swords is uh, someone who has mastered their mental world. And so it's something that you're getting clear on here, for sure, because the ace of swords is clarity. It is my yes card, so you can be giving a yes answer to something. Um, you are definitely getting clarity. You want to understand things uh, differently and better. And um, it is a new mental cycle for you um, in which you can take action through clarity, which is really nice. And you have the star card there with that. So the star card is definitely looking towards the future event or something uh, future related. Now again, you have the teacher card and the death card. So the death card definitely has a lot to do with the endings here and the new beginnings. It, def it um, mirrors each other for sure. But the star card is, is a future event. It's something for the future, something that can be under a lucky star, something or someone that you feel like you are um, destined for, right? The destiny. It's kind of like following your own star. And um, it is associated with Aquarius, so there's, again, more information. And uh, these three cards are also uh, in regards to information, knowledge, clarity, understanding things a lot clearer. So really nice card. There is a sense of vulnerability with the star card, however. But in a way, spirit has your back here. You are behaving like yourself, the Queen of Cups. So there is a real um, interesting focus here with the Queen of Cups. Now, very often on the negative side, the Queen of Cups can be moodiness um, or uh, even sometimes martyrdom. But I don't really see that here. Um, but I do think you will be examining your emotions along with the information that comes with you. It's kind of like... Um, you're your own teacher. You can study your own um, intellect here. And you can study your own emotion through your intellect. This is a highly um, intuitive person, and they really trust their feelings. They listen to their feelings. Um, and it's not so much uh, emotion as it is Mm, I don't want to say that. I don't want to. I think it's not as much feeling as it is intuition, right? You can you can feel into something. There's a lot of people say I run on emotion, right, with the Queen of Cups, but I do feel it's more intuitive energy, and it's it's kind of like you can feel into something. You can be your own teacher in that sense. Um, so you are in your own energy here with the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups for me is a Scorpio card. Um, I'm going to pull one more for that for some reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's water, water everywhere, right? 
this is an expansion for me, an expansion of the mind, especially with that Ace of Swords. We're expanding our experiences and we're learning from them and we're understanding them. And again, you could be the teacher here. You could be teaching somebody something uh, with this card, um, with these two cards. This is definitely an expansion of the mind. I don't see insecurity with the rest of these cards. I just don't. We're really quite hopeful here. So for me, this is a very expansive energy. Highly intuitive, highly psychic. Um, it's mental and emotional energy. I don't know, it seems to me like what you uncover, um, what you get clear on, has something to do with your emotional world, for sure. But it's hopeful and it's optimistic with the star card. So our, you know, your waters, your emotions may start to calm down because of the clarity and the insight that you're receiving. And it's also you, like, going ahead and diving in, taking, you know, giving a yes answer to some future event or a future situation or a future person. I do see a lot of conversation with the outcome here and this Knight of Wands, so I do feel like there's a lot of communication going on. This is your daily life, the Ten of Pentacles. It uh, can be daily living costs, people that you talk to on a daily basis. Um, it is associated with Virgo, so it's also the card of um, something that gets done, it gets done properly. And so you're going to make sure where your daily life is concerned that things are done the way you want them to, whether that you're doing it or whether someone else is doing it. You're going to make sure that you're communicating in clearly in a way where whatever needs to get done gets done the way you want it to be done. And there can be a few things that you're up against here with that Seven of Wands. This is a competitive energy. Maybe you are dealing with competitors. That's possible here. You're certainly learning from it. I mean, that teacher uh, card keeps popping up for me. And here we have an interesting hierarchy, right? Uh, you have the grandfather, the parents, the child, half of a child anyway, and the two dogs. <laughs> the dogs are more important than this. I find that interesting. Um, because uh, the artist of the deck did everything on purpose. Everything that is in each of the uh, illustrations has a purpose, has a meaning. And I find it interesting that there's a half a, half a child there. But in any case, um, these, this is your community, it's your tribe, it can be your family, uh, extended family, that sort of thing um, that you may be dealing with here. But it's also like daily living costs, so um, I want to have a look at that Seven of Wands here, because that can be competitive energy. Uh, people in situations that kind of try to knock you down from your lofty space, right, your higher ground. But because you have higher ground here, you usually went out on a competition. Temperance, okay. Yeah, I do feel like there are going to be some things that you're going to have to come up against here with the Seven of Wands. But the Temperance is saying, um, mind your... Um, <laughs> mind your temper, right? Keep it balanced. Things are in a state of flux right now. So with the temperance card, they're changing, they're changeable. And so you can't quite pin anything down just yet. And that might be the seven of wands here, because that was my question. What, uh, you know, what's, what's, what are you up against here in this competitive energy? And it just means that things are not quite settled yet. Um, they're still in a state of flux, they're still moving, they're still refining. So I feel like, again, there's a refining energy. And that goes nicely with the Ten of Pentacles because it is saying, like, what you want to get done has to be done properly. And that takes time and patience with the Temperance card. Moderation, uh, minding your temper with the Temperance card. And um, things are in a state of flux for the next two weeks. It is also, I think, an interesting card in that it asks you to spiritualize your daily life. So whatever you do on a daily basis with the Temperance card is asking you to kind of make it matter, make it mean more than just something mundane that you do every day. Um, I always think, like, 
one of the first questions people ask in, in at least the States is, what do you do for a living? And for me, I always think it doesn't really matter what you do, it's how you do it. You know, what energy do you bring to it? You can sell a slice of pizza with a happy face and make more people happy than, you know, the biggest CEO out there who's, you know, pushing, I don't know, rubber, you know, whatever. Um, so it, it isn't what you do, it's how you do it. <clears throat> and that's the temperance card for me a little bit, is asking you to spiritualize uh, what you do. Even... Um, Washing dishes can be a meditation, you know. So that's pretty much what I have for you. I do ask what spirit wants you to know. And yeah, indeed, the messenger, right? So spirit guides, um, ignorance or um, divine signs, uh, disregard. That's, that would be in the ignorance <laughs> section here. Um, unreceptive or protector. Now this card is not in the regular um, Major Arcana deck, or any deck for that matter. It is an extra card, so I can't go any further than that, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And I think that um, that may be a teacher energy, right? The messages that you're getting and, um, and making things um, more spiritual, seeing the divine signs in what's going on around you. It means more than just, um, you know, a bird sitting at your windowsill. There's something that the bird is trying to tell you. And so you would look up, uh, you know, a particular bird totem. Let's say it's a woodpecker, right? And you would then look at the woodpecker totem. That kind of thing. Don't disregard um, signs and symbols and um, uh, information that like keeps coming at you, you keep hearing the same thing, you maybe overhear it from other people, then you read about it, then you watch a telev television program, and it's on there as well. Those are repeating messages. So, there you go. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I'll be back in two weeks um, with a full moon reading. Until then, take good care. Bye for now.